Well, welcome to week five. We've been together for the past five weeks, and I pray this has been a blessing to you as you've walked through uh, these past couple of weeks, really figuring out where your emotions are. Again, remembering that emotions are not bad, they need to be tempered. When we're together in a group, it's more than just studying the Bible. I pray that friendships have been developed. I pray that you feel even more known today. I pray that there's been times that God has just opened your heart up to the beauty of community. And I pray you continue on to, to lean into more of community and uh, that you've enjoyed this time together. As we end our time, we're gonna look at this last emotion as the emotion of grief. And when we think about grief, we think primarily sometimes, and again, not wanting to make a generalization, but usually at the end of life, that we grieve the passing of a loved one. Now we use that word in many ways. We may say, stop giving me grief, but you can grieve other things in your life. You can grieve the loss of a dream. You can grieve a broken relationship. You can even grieve what we're saying here, your sin. It breaks your heart, not only God's heart, when sin enters into his children's life, but as we look in Psalms 51, that grief can lead to the beauty of the cleansing power of Jesus Christ. And so I'm gonna to read to you Psalms 51, verses two through four. It says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and none what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words. I've talked a little bit about this, even with these emotions, about the story about when my mom did pass. And I can remember that day, a day of grief for our entire family, of not only when she passed, but then the funeral that followed. And there's days of grieving and mourning. And still even to this day, 10 years later, I can still remember that, but my dad wore it so much deeper than me or my brother. The effect that I, it had on my dad from his face to his countenance, to the weight that he had lost during it, he looked like a different man. Grief had consumed him. It had consumed every piece of him because his heart was broken. When we think about grieving over sin and we think about the sin that David is writing about, this sin was the effect that led him to an adulterous relationship with Bathsheba, the, the wife of Uriah, and also the murder of Uriah and the cover-up of it. So it was this vast, huge monster of sin that he was struggling with. When it was pointed out to him by Nathan the prophet, this was the psalm that he wrote based off of that. Because sin is all consuming. And we will never grieve sin until we really start at the heart level. We all have renegade hearts. Hearts that want to declare a mutiny against the God who would give us rules, a way to live our life, the way that we would, he would structure our lives or to say that there's boundaries or you can't go here, you can't go into that relationship. Our renegade heart will rise up, shake a fist at the creator and say, no one tells me what to do. It can invade our entire life. So what does it look like when we sin against God? Often we think about sin against us, sin against another person, but what does it look like when we sin against God? Well, I think the first thing when we realize that we've sinned against God, what we want to happen in our life as we grieve our sin is we want to experience the cleansing of God. Been a dad for a while now and I can remember just, it just seems so easy that a child would want to get clean, but often my children would not want to. They wouldn't want to take a shower. But when we realize the dirt and the filth that's on our life, what do we want? We want to be clean. And this cleansing that God is going to give us, we see this, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. That word iniquity, it's gross, twisted immorality is the word there. And ritual cleansing would be a part as they, the priest would gather before God. And David is saying, wash me like that. Wash me thoroughly, wash me into my heart. He wants to experience 
what it is. He wanted to know his sins. He, he knew his transgressions. Again, he switches words here. Iniquities, gross twisted immorality, transgression, he broke the law. The covenant law that God had given, he knew that he stepped over that. Every day, the children of God need to ask the following question of the Holy Spirit who resides within our heart. What part of me needs to die today so that I can live for Jesus? Because we are vulnerable to the sin, the transgressions of this world. We talked a couple of times today or, or, or in the past year about what are some questions that we could ask of ourselves. And maybe you've heard these questions in different venues, maybe different worship services you've been in, or maybe even in a sermon or two. But I want to remind you of some questions I've put before you as a pastor before. And here's three things you can ask yourself. Number one, how did I feed myself today? Each and every day we can come to the table that's set before us that God has with His Word. Number two, how did I feed others? This is a great part of Christian discipleship. How am I pouring my life into others? Today, as you're in a group, people have prepared, they've come to pour their life into others. But third, and this deals with sin, how have I fed the flesh? Ask yourself that each day. How have I fed the flesh? Keep a short list of wrongs with others and also with God. What do we do out of this? Well, repentance, that's what it is. It's care. This is what David is trying to do. He is repenting. And repentance is not just feeling sorry for the sin that we have and then making amends. No, true repentance is always going to lead to Jesus. Where we realize our sin is divine treason. We often want to see sin as something we did to someone. But really, it's actually against God. So what does it look like when we grieve our sin here in verse 17? Where well, it looks like this. It looks like when we grieve our sin, it looks like repentance. Well, what do I mean by that? Growing up, I would always hear that word repent. It's the word metanoia. It's a, it's a, it's a military term. It means a, a full scale. You were going this way and you went this way. And I always heard it as a one time event. Like I need to repent. Repentance is a posture before God. It's not just a event, a motion in time. It's a posture that we are always turning from sin and self and turning to Jesus. So we grieve our sin. And that grief, that realization of what we have done leads us to the foot of the cross. So let the grief that we have over our sin, maybe today no one has ever given you an invitation to let go of some of that. Maybe some of you today, you keep grieving your sin and what you did to your children or what you did and why I say a former life and that haunts you. Today, let the shadow of the cross and the glory of God and the work that Jesus did on the cross release you from that. David was restored. The grief led him to the God of his fathers and he was restored. And that's where grief of sin should lead us to the foot of the cross. I hope you've enjoyed these past five weeks. I hope you continue in groups and I hope you enjoy the time that you're gonna to have together as we talk about the grief that we should have over sin. Thank you.